Here we go, new board review, Infinity Downtown. The Infinity Downtown, uh, kind of a rarity for us on the channel, I would say, to really feature and focus on a downwind specific board, such as the Downtown. And um, why is that? Well, I would say arguably in the UK, downwinding doesn't have really the broad appeal and the take up that we see in other countries and territories around the world. Um, and I think that is partly down to the conditions that we have here in the UK. We don't really have, pre predominantly around the UK, really good solid groundswell. Everything that we have in terms of downwinding is just that, your downwind. It all tends to be wind-driven uh, waves, wind on your back type stuff. And as a result, I think it doesn't really, hasn't really kind of taken root amongst people's minds. I think there's also, as well, a slight issue with UK paddling in a sense, in that the vast majority of paddleboarding in the UK is really takes place on flat water. Um, I think that's kind of sad in some ways, in that we are an island nation, we're surrounded by some fantastic conditions, groundswell or not, that ultimately is kind of being missed, I feel. Now, we are seeing a bigger uptake as we move forwards as a company, up to nearly our 10 year anniversary, into more all water specific boards, particularly say from Infinity, the Blackfish is by far and away the most popular model in the 14 foot lineup from Dave and the team. Um, but with that, there are a growing number of downwind specific boards being sold by us. Uh, out there in the marketplace as people are really starting to find and grow and develop this niche. From a recent demo weekend that we've had here at the SUP company focused on race and performance boards, the downtown was the one that really kind of turned a lot of people's heads for reasons that they weren't expecting. Now, like it or not here, particularly at our shop at Woodmill in Southampton, we have pretty benign conditions. Uh, we're really, really sheltered. And as a result, to kind of see what really an all water board can do, and particularly a downwind focused board can do, is really difficult to achieve. As a result, these types of boards tend to fall foul when they are being paddled in flat water conditions. The downtown has been a massive surprise and really a big exception to that generalized rule of that downwind boards really are a bit sluggish. Uh, they kind of push their way through flat water rather than glide across it, like something more flat water focused, say like a whiplash from infinity. But as a result, with the downtown, well, it's quick in the flat. It's very lightweight. It's really manageable and really playful. And that, I think, surprised not only me, surprised Tom, who you see paddling in all our videos as well, but also a lot of people that came to our race weekend and got to try the downtown. People didn't expect it to be as good as it really is in those really benign conditions. Take it out in the conditions that it's actually meant for, as we've done a couple of times now, and the thing just comes alive even more so. All those playful qualities that you find on the flat water really just kind of explode and burst into life when you are in those downwind conditions that we have here in the UK and on the South Coast. Now, as we do in all our videos, let me run you through from the nose down to the tail and really explain as to why we're finding that when we're out paddling the board. Small amount of rocker, and it is a small amount of rocker in this board when compared to other downwind boards on the market. Nothing overly aggressive, just a nice, tuned, well thought out and considered rocker line shape. It actually is predominantly only in the nose section. It's not 
carried out anywhere near as aggressively. It's actually quite soft and even gentler still in the tail end of this board. The nose itself though, very pulled in, quite lean, but voluminous. And all that volume is packed on top into the center forward sections of this board. And it's encased in this uh, point, this ridge that runs all the way across the nose. I really like that in general across boards. To me, that strikes that the boards are gonna ride stiffer as a result because there's this line that's creating this ridge and therefore building rigidity into the board through that shape. But in a board like this as well, it sheds water very easily. You find that not an awful lot comes back into the deck. In fact, just at the front here of the main standing area where the deck pad starts to reveal itself, you'll find just how pronounced that nose section is just behind the Gore-Tex vent here with the FCS mount. It just sheds water really, really well. The overall finish and aesthetic of the board, there's never any doubting that it's an infinity because of this very striking three stripes across the nose that Dave runs across nearly all of his designs. For some, what does split opinion is the finish. This is uh, their suspension or suspension uh, carbon technology. It's a full brushed carbon finish. For some, they don't like the aesthetic. Me personally, I love it. I want to know that I've got a carbon board. I love this kind of ratty look finish to it. Every board is unique as a result in terms of how they're finished and then sanded back at the factory. It reduces weight a lot in a board. So you've got to think about a fully painted board. Paint in a board is worth, you know, around one, 1 1.2 kilos across a 14 foot board, which is an awful lot. So when you have this brushed finish to actually then go and take a lot of the gel and the paint away, it reduces weight within the board. But yeah, as I say, I like it. I like to see carbon in my carbon board. The board though, as we follow it back down towards the deck pad, Really comfortable on the foot, you know, nothing too taxing about the deck pad itself. It's relatively thick, diamond cut EVA deck pad with this kind of like uh, coin type finish to it. It's really nice on the foot, super easy. There is a slight recess to the deck itself, which provides a little bit of security with your footwork. You know when you're coming towards the edge of the board and you don't need to look down too much in terms of trying to find out where you are. And then you come to the handle and the handle is really generous, really, really big, nice soft handle as well. So if you do happen to stand on it, or if you are on the board on your knees for any point of time, it's very easy and it's gonna collapse underfoot uh, or underneath you and your body weight on there. But it's there, it's nice and easy to get hold of. Again, if you need to recover yourself as well from the water back onto the board, not that ever happens when I go downwinding. But yeah, if you need to get back on, it's there. It's a nice touch. And then you start to come to the overall outline of the tail of this board. And it's so pulled in that from a riding perspective for a board that's 27 inches in width, that just means a really responsive, playful nature. Now you can take that to also mean unstable. And yeah, it's less stable in the tail, but I think what Dave's been quite clever in designing this board is, is it's predictable, it's manageable, and the board doesn't kind of surprise you. It lets you know where the limit is, in a sense, but it just doesn't kind of like sneak up on you and then try to catch you out. It's just really easy to use as a result. And I think that when you are downwinding, that's what you want in a board like this, is for it to be predictable in its nature. So look, let's take the board and just pop it over onto its rail slightly so you can get an idea as to that rocker line overall. On the underside of the board, there's some really nice subtle features within it. And on that nose section with that slightly pronounced, almost aggressive, uh, rocker within the nose section, there is this very subtle V that gives off two gentle concaves in the nose of this board. That then as you work your way back down towards the core infinity logo on the underside here, you end up with a really wide yet subtle, and this is the thing with this board, everything is just soft. And that's what's leaning towards this predictable nature that it has. 
is this really nice, soft, gentle, single concave that runs almost the entire main standing area to the point of that you get right the way just to the head, the forward section of the fin box, and then it transitions. The board transitions into two concaves and this very subtle V as you work your way back to the tail. And that again is adding to this playful, responsive nature that the downtown has because you end up pivoting on this V and you, you can easily get the board to either drift to the left or respond to the right. And as a result, it's just really enjoyable to paddle. On flat water, and I believe the reason for the popularity of it here at our recent demo, was all of those things combined shone through in even the most benign of conditions because they make the board quick. The board's overall lightweightness also adds to its speed and its ability to glide and respond to each paddling input. And that, as an overall package, really lends itself to be, I would argue, one of the best and best quality made downwind boards there are out there in the market. Um, Infinity is a brand, cool as can be. Um, so if you fancy being a downwind speed freak, well, it's got to be an Infinity downtown. Thanks for watching our video. If you've got any questions about what you've seen, why not give us a call in the shop or head over to thesupco.com. To stay up to date though with all of our videos, well, make sure you subscribe up here and hit the notification bell. But to see our next video, well, take a look up here.